All right, again, thanks everyone for joining us. We are here to talk about giving day strategy for Live PC, Give PC. Uh, November uh, will be here any moment. So um, it's a great time to, if you haven't yet, really buckle down and finalize all the details for making this year's campaign a success. Um, my name is Bethany. I'm the director of our community team here at Mighty Cause, and I have had the good fortune of working with the Park City Community Foundation team for many years now, uh, helping to put on this event. So happy to be here with you guys today to share uh, some, some details and some things to consider as you prepare your giving day strategy. We will get started with just a few basics and reminders. Um, we did do a webinar earlier this month uh, that included the basics for Live PC Give PC. So if you're new to the event, you're new to your nonprofit, and you're looking for more detail on how to get started, how to build your page, make sure you go back to that nonprofit toolkit on the website and you will be able to check out the recording of that first webinar, which will walk you through all the details. Um, we'll do a quick refresher today on some key things, um, but you can access that recording for more information. We'll spend most of our time today talking about campaign strategy, things that you can really build into your campaign to um, help grow your uh, results. Many of you have participated in years past in Live PC, Give PC. So um, if you're looking for ways to refresh your campaign, to make it a little more exciting, to you know, uh, expand some of the goals that you may have had in the past. Hopefully, some of the things and strategies we'll we talk about today uh, can be beneficial for you to consider implementing. We will wrap it up with a quick reminder on some of the great prizes that are being offered uh, as a part of your participating in this event. Uh, leaderboard prizes offered by uh, the Park City Community Foundation and all the great sponsors that they have uh, gotten on board with the campaign. And uh, we will spend a few minutes at the end for any Q&A. So feel free to type into that go to webinar control panel on the right hand side of your screen if you do have questions as we go throughout the presentation. At any time during the campaign between now and Live PC Give PC, if you have questions on your page, how to upload a logo, where to access your donations report, anything like that, you can always feel free to reach out to us by sending an email to support at mightycause.com. All right, so we will get started with the Giving Day Basics. <clears throat> so hopefully most of you that are here with us today have already taken this critical first step of registering your nonprofit to participate. If you have not yet, that is the very first thing that you should do when you jump off of today's webinar is go complete that registration form to ensure that your nonprofit is eligible and ready to participate in this year's event. Your form will be reviewed and you will receive an approval email. Once you do, you can add or remove any additional administrators to your own organization page. Um, so each organization page can have, I believe, up to 10 administrators. So if you need to add a volunteer coordinator, if you need to add your accounting person, executive director, you are able to manage that all within your own uh, settings. So um, the deadline will be here shortly. Make sure that you go ahead and, like I said, if you haven't yet, complete that registration form as soon as you hop off today's webinar. And as a note, you will find the call to do that. Go to livepcgivepc.org. Front and center on that website will be a big button for nonprofit registration. Click on that to get started. So once you're registered, um, your next step is, of course, to customize your uh, profile page, build out your campaign. So just wanted to uh, do some quick uh, context setting here and make sure everyone knows where to find what on the platform. So when you log in to uh, livepcgivepc.org, in the upper right hand corner of the screen, you will see your user profile hovering over that. You'll see an option to click on the dashboard for your nonprofit organization. That's always a great starting point. And from there, you will see your home page. That's your top item on that dashboard. That's going to show you your key metrics since 
uh, over the last month. You do have some flexibility to change that to see your metrics over time. Uh, you can also access your to-do list, which will walk you through some of the very key uh, important things to do. Make sure that you are uh, ready for participation in the event. The next item down the dashboard is your profile. This is the key page that you'll want to customize for participation in LivePC GivePC. This is the profile, the link you'll be sharing with donors to make their donations. Next down the dashboard, you'll find your reports. This will give you access to all of your reports, donation reports, offline donation report where you can add offline donations for the event, disbursement reports where you can access uh, detailed information following LivePC GivePC to reconcile any disbursements that you receive with the donations associated. Your next item down the dashboard will be fundraising. That's going to help walk you through all the different uh, fundraising tools that you have access to on the platform. So if you've got any peer-to-peer -peer campaigns being started for your organization, the ability to customize the donor experience, including setting those suggested donation levels and building a custom thank you page, setting up matching grants, et cetera. All of that fun stuff will live under your fundraising icon on the dashboard. And then finally, your settings. And that's really the kind of overarching stuff, like I mentioned before, in adding new administrators to your page, setting up your uh, direct deposit for disbursement, details like that. So quick overview of the dashboard and where you can access all the key things that you'll want to for the campaign. So I mentioned the profile previously. It bears repeating uh, because this is really the, the key page that you'll want to customize and build out for the, <clears throat> for the event. This is the main link that you'll share with supporters. So you've got lots of tools on the page to customize the look and feel adding your logo, adding a great background image, choosing a theme color that will um, tie in, tie back into your brand or your logo. And then you've got a really uh, free form section to tell the story about your organization. Why should donors make their donation? What is so important about the work that you do in your community? So that's really your chance to get donors excited about making their gift. <clears throat> I briefly mentioned the donor experience. This is something, again, you can access through the fundraising icon of your dashboard. The two key things that you'll want to focus on here is really um, customizing the checkout process for donors. And by that, I mean choosing what kind of data you'd like to collect. If you really want to collect the phone number for donors, for example, there's a toggle. You can switch that on to ask donors for their phone number. Um, you can set uh, custom donation suggestions. So by default, the system will offer up four donation levels for donors, 25, 50, 75, and $100. If you wanna change those up, you'd encourage, uh, you'd like to encourage your donors to give a donation in 50 as the lowest and work up from there. You can certainly do that. You can set whatever four levels you'd like. And you also have the ability to add a description associated with them. So help donors understand what does their $50 donation actually mean for your organization? What impact can it really have? You have the ability to preview the donation experience here. So once you have built any customizations out, take a moment to do a quick preview ahead of the event. It's always helpful for you to know exactly what that donation experience is gonna look like so you can feel confident you're Board members can feel confident if a donor does reach out to you with a question, you are more prepared to answer it. Of course, support at mightycause.com is always here if a donor has a question when making their donation, but best practice always to uh, make sure you've tested that experience. And the final piece is uh, post-checkout. So what happens after a donor makes their donation? You have the ability to build a custom thank you page you have another free form editing section. You can add photos, videos, links, all kinds of great uh, personal um, message to the donors. Uh, so build out that thank you page. That's your first 
interaction with a donor immediately after they've made their donation. So that's a really key piece of that stewardship. And you can also add a custom message into the receipt. So both of those tools will be accessed under the donor experience in post checkout. So once you've built that as well, again, you can test the whole process start to finish and know exactly what the donation experience will look like for your donors. Nonprofit Toolkit, there's all kinds of resources available on the website. So if you haven't yet, make sure you visit livepcgivepc.org and access the toolkit. Um, these are all here prepared for you lovingly by the Community Foundation to help make your lives easier when you prepare your campaign. So take a look and see what you might be able to borrow from there in streamlining your workload. And again, that's where you can access the recording of today's webinar and our previous webinar. All right, so as I mentioned, we just wanted to take a few minutes to cover some of the basics, refresher, <clears throat> and you can always access that previous webinar for more detail. And now to really jump into what we wanna focus on today, campaign strategy. So we'll cover a handful of key ideas, concepts, things that you should consider in building out your campaign. So the first one, uh, an easy one, is start the process early. So we all know the fun happens on November 8th. That's when most of the giving will happen. Um, but you don't have to wait until November 8th to get started. You can start now. Early donations are open. So you can start accepting early donations before the event to build momentum. Now, you'll want to be strategic about how you do this because if you start hitting donors up early and often, then by the time we get to November 8th, your donors might be a bit fatigued from seeing the ask to give to Live PC, Give PC. But there's definitely ways that you can uh, build this in to start getting early donations maybe go to a few key supporters, a few close supporters, and get them to make early gifts just to help set you up for success on the giving day. Um, all donations that are made early will be processed immediately. The donor will get their receipt right away. You'll see their information in your donation report right away, but their donations will count for Live PC, Give PC. And once November 8th is here and the live event kicks off, you will see your totals in the leaderboard reflecting any of that early giving that you've been able to secure. <clears throat> Beyond that, another key strategy that you can keep in mind and something that you should start working on today if you haven't already considered it is adding a matching grant into your campaign. So everybody loves giving days. A day like Live PC, Give PC is, is fun and exciting because it creates a sense of urgency for your donors. Give during this 24 hour period. Your ability to secure and add a matching grant to your campaign works the exact same way. It's just an additional layer of urgency, an additional layer of excitement. Donors love to know that their donation, their hard earned dollars can go even farther, can do even more for the cause that they support. So it's a really great way to get your donors even more excited about making their gift. There's still plenty of time before November 8th. So you do have the time to, if you haven't yet, start thinking about how and where you can secure a matching grant from. So start by looking at your list of prospects. Who could you potentially reach out to for a matching gift? Every single nonprofit has a board of directors that they could always turn to. And I've seen many use their board to uh, crowdsource uh, a number of donations that all get grouped together for a giving day match. You may have a major donor that always makes a donation during Live PC Give PC every year, or they give at the end of the year every year. If that's the case, reach out to them now, see if they might be willing to make that gift early so that you can use that as an additional tool of leverage for Live PC Give PC allow them to make the major gift that they were going to make anyways, and let that go further because it can inspire more giving. So again, look at your list, see who might be a good fit for that, for an ask, and then 
take the time, we do still have time, take the time to connect with them, chat with them, make sure that you understand really what their key motivations are. A board member will have a different motivation than a major donor, will have a different motivation than a corporate partner or uh, a local business that might be interested in providing a match. So once you feel like you do have a good sense of what they're really looking for, what they're interested in, then you can develop the ask. So again, a local business might have much more interest in the promotion that they can get uh, from providing a match to you because that's a marketing tool for them. So when you ask them, you can build that into the pitch. A major donor may have a completely different motivation for making their gift. They may just be interested in really understanding the value of that donation for your organization and the additional uh, impact that they will allow you to have by making that gift. So um, taking the time to really kind of plan that out, you can make sure that you craft your ask in the right way to appeal to what they're looking for. <clears throat> There's, as we'll talk about in just a moment, lots of flexible options on the platform in terms of how to set up your match so you can have a conversation with the donor about what they're interested in what what is exciting to them what what kind of activity are they interested in helping you drive um, and don't be intimidating if you if you get a few smaller as I mentioned board members maybe they each want to give a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars group them together and make that uh, a more impactful match all at once or you can stack a few in a row so that you've got lots of different new exciting opportunities popping up throughout the day. So once you secure your match, the next step is of course promoting that match. Make the match work for you because if you have a match and nobody knows about it, where is the benefit? So first and foremost, you can post it on your page. So the screenshot that you're seeing here is an example of what that match will look like on your page. You can add a logo, you can add a title, you can showcase the donor if they'd like to be showcased and see that live countdown of how much is left in that match. That's going to be what adds urgency for your donors as they come to make their donation during the campaign. Aside from what exists on your page, make sure that you keep your uh, donors and supporters updated in email, in social media, let them know there's a match available. Make your call to actions respond to the fact that you have a match. Don't just say donate, say double your donation, um, for example, and share progress as you move towards it. Again, take advantage of the sense of urgency that comes by having a match as a part of your campaign. And for those of you that are uh, familiar with the platform and have used it many years, uh, we have a few new features as it relates to creating your match and posting your match on the platform. So I wanted to call out some of those. <clears throat> as I just mentioned on the previous one, you have the ability to add a title and a logo to your uh, match. So that's a new thing that just more display uh, gives you the option. So if you do have a corporate partner, for example, great opportunity to give them a little extra love by adding the logo of their, um, uh, their company. But a few other things that you can now do this year in terms of expanding the tool, you can decide if you wanna count offline donations towards your match. So as we know, offline donations will not count to leaderboards for Live PC Give PC, but you still have the ability to add them to your page to reflect the totals that you've raised during the event. So if you are going to be adding offline donations and you'd like those to count for the match that you post on your page, you can do that. You also have the ability now to create matches that don't just match based on a number of dollars that you raise during the campaign. You can set a match to be reached or completed uh, based on number of donations. So let's say, uh, you have a $5,000 match that kicks in if you get 50 donations to your campaign for the giving day. So it just gives you a little bit more flexibility to try some uh, additional types of matching campaigns. <clears throat> you can queue a grant to start when a previous one ends. So as I mentioned, if you have a couple different opportunities, you can set your second match to automatically kick in as soon as your first match ends. 
So again, you're keeping the excitement going with new fresh opportunities throughout the day. Um, and finally, if you do have uh, fundraisers for your organization, whether you have peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers or you have different programs of your pages or of your organization with their own um, unique fundraising page, you can decide whether or not donations to those pages below your organization page should count or not. So just a little bit of increased flexibility and functionality there to really hopefully make this match tool work for you. The key goal is allow you to post this match on your page to get your donors excited for giving. So just a couple other things that you can do now this year to give you more flexibility there. So beyond matching grants, one of the key things that we always urge people to consider in building a successful Giving Day campaign is consider how you can make use of your ambassadors. And ambassadors can mean all different types of things. It can be somebody that helps you spread the word. It can be somebody that comes and volunteers at an event you have. It can be somebody that starts a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for you. It's just your, your A team, your inner circle, who's going to really help you make this campaign a success. So the way that I will talk about it in today's training is particularly considering those ambassadors that might be willing to start peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for you. But just know that there's all different types of ways that people can be involved as ambassadors. And somebody that may not be a great fit for peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser may still be a great ambassador that can help you be successful. So think about the type of people that you have access to in your inner circle, your network of supporters, and, and what could they do that would really have the most impact for you based on their skill set, their experience, etc. cetera. Um, so <clears throat> there's all kinds of reasons that you'd want to engage your ambassadors to start peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, campaigns for your organization, they're going to they're gonna reach new people that you can't. Uh, you may not have their friends and family and their mom and their coworkers on your email database, but they do. So if they've got their own page, they can spread the word and activate those individuals, bring new donors into the fold. Um, they are, of course, going beyond any traditional outreach that you're doing. Bringing in those new donors, raising more dollars. <clears throat> but uh, a, a couple of the other key benefits that I think maybe can, can be a little bit less, um, less known with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is one, you have the opportunity to kind of build out this bank of individuals that are sharing personal stories about why they love your organization, why your organization is so important to the Park City community. Those are great stories that make an impact on people making a donation during this campaign, but also are really helpful for your organization in terms of collecting uh, these great testimonials and, and feedback and content from people that just love what you do. And you build stronger supporters because of it. Those people that have taken the effort to become a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser that are reaching out to their own network on your behalf, they are a much stronger and more committed supporter than somebody who's just made a donation to you. So it's a great way to kind of move people along a stewardship pipeline. If they've been a donor for years, if they've been a monthly donor for years, this is a great next step for them. <clears throat> so there's lots of things that you can do to help kind of make peer-to-peer -peer fundraising easier for people if they've never done it before or if you've maybe never done it before. <clears throat> Personal outreach can be really helpful in this sort of thing. Identifying the people that you think are the right fit and just having a quick conversation to help them understand what it really means to do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. They may not be a full-time fundraiser like you are, so it might feel a little daunting to them. You can help ease their concern um, and let them know that at the end of the day, the key goal is just to help you spread the word. Um, you can provide resources to them. You can give them tips on how to ask people for money. Again, if it's not something they do, they might need a little bit of help or they might appreciate a little help in the form of suggestions and or templates that they can use, copy and paste to plug into their email. Um, and 
there's lots of fun things you can do with team fundraising or bringing groups together for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So the example that I am showing here is really one of my favorite ones to consider for a giving day. We've talked about the board of directors already a little bit, but if you're not using them for a match, or even maybe if you are, and you have a stellar board of directors that you can really count on to be there for your organization, a team fundraising campaign is a great way to engage them to be a part of your campaign. So with team fundraising, each of your board members can have their own unique peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page that they build. And then you can have this team page, which kind of brings them all together. You can create a sense of fun, friendly competition between your board members. You can have a challenge to see which board member can bring in the most dollars or have the most donors give to them. Uh, this, this can also, by bringing people together, um, it, it creates a bit of a, a sense of community around those people fundraising for you, and they don't feel like they're doing it alone because they, you know, here with a group of other people doing the same thing. Um, so that can be a, a great helpful source of encouragement. Um, and it also, you know, builds in some tools like creating a template page that makes it super easy for them to just publish and get started raising funds, <clears throat> you can really just make the process easier for them. And then if you do have a group like this, <clears throat> it's really important to kind of stay engaged with them throughout the process. Again, this is not their full-time job. They are not full-time fundraisers. So they will need follow-up and encouragement from you. So sending, you know, a weekly or bi-weekly email to check in, say thanks, um, encourage them to try something new, give them a tip on how to fundraise, whatever it might be, keeping in touch with them throughout the progress, uh, throughout the campaign will be much more uh, likely to help them be successful during their efforts. So moving on from kind of the, the whole concept of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, in terms of outreach, there's just a few key things to think about both in terms of email and then next we'll get to social media. Of course, uh, email remains to be one of the best ways to connect with your donors. It's one of the best ways to convert supporters to donors to get people to actually make a donation to your campaign. So make sure that you have a really solid email strategy for the campaign. And that doesn't just mean what email are you sending on November 8th, what emails are you sending in advance? How many emails are you sending on November 8th? What emails are you sending to what contacts? Um, segmentation is something we talk about often here. It's a really great way to improve the return on your email engagement. Talk differently to your recurring donors than you do to your one-time donors. Talk differently to the donors who have already made a donation in 2019 versus those that have yet to make a donation in 2019. Uh, something we'll talk about a little more in a moment. Talk differently to the donors that gave last year during Live PC, Give PC, uh, than those that, you know, um, haven't yet made their donation this year. <clears throat> so thinking about the different key audiences that you have, you don't have to reinvent the wheel for each one of them, but, but even minor segmentation with a bit of adjustment on the language can really help the donor to feel like you have personalized the experience for them. You understand that they already gave to you once this year and you're still asking for them to support, but you're acknowledging the fact that they've already made a gift, for example. Um, so taking the time now to kind of lay all of this out will allow you to review the schedule, come up with the timing that makes sense. You know, maybe you have the most success with your emails that you send in the morning because that's when your contacts tend to uh, be online the most, or maybe you find it's the opposite because they all get in, start their work day, and they're really busy, and it's not until lunchtime or late afternoon that you have better success rates. You can take a look at your past email campaigns and see kind of how the results change. Is there a time of day that works better for you? Is there a day of the week that works better for you? Of course, November 8th is the day that you'll want to send some emails for sure, but in advance of that, in terms of helping to 
spread the word, get people excited, build momentum ahead of time, there may be a day of the week better for you than others. Uh, always test everything. Um, just like with the donation experience, you'll want to test and preview the email experience, uh, especially on mobile, um, making sure that it's really easy for people to see your big, clear call to action, your donate button, easy for them to see and click on from mobile. Um, that is one of the most important things to, to check for. Beyond <clears throat> email, of course, social media is another great way to stay uh, connected and uh, continue to post content throughout the event. Um, this is a great way to kind of supplement your emails, share more frequent updates in a way that won't pester people's inbox. <clears throat> so um, you will have a place, I'm sure, where you get more interaction with your followers. If Facebook is the place where you have the, the biggest network of followers and they really engage, you can spend your energy there. If Instagram is, then spend your energy there. Don't feel like you need to post everywhere just to do it. Think about where you're gonna get the most return on your effort. Consider if you have a budget for any boosted posts to increase your reach. <clears throat> Think about what else will help to increase your reach, which is creative, engaging content, photo, video in particular. Facebook love, loves videos. Um, so. Think about what you can do to really make somebody want to interact with your post, share it, like it, comment, et cetera. And again, just like with emails, make sure there's always a clear call to action. Donate now, share this page, start a fundraiser, double your donation, whatever it might be. Make that clear in the ask and include your link always. <clears throat> I mentioned a little bit earlier, kind of when we were talking about email, uh, but it bears its own focus in this webinar because donor retention is such a critical piece and an often overlooked piece, unfortunately, of having a successful campaign. So many of you have participated in this event before. So you have multiple years of donor data of people that have participated. They've already given through LivePC, GivePC. So that is your lowest hanging fruit. Those should be the very easiest people to convert and get them to re-give this year. <clears throat> but despite the fact that those people are often the easiest to get to give again, donor retention is incredibly low. And that's just across nonprofit fundraising in general. It's not, it's not specific to LivePC, GivePC, or to your organization, um, but it's lower than it should be across the board. Even though it costs much less to retain those existing donors than to acquire a brand new donor, oftentimes the focus for a fundraising campaign does not include a specific targeted effort on retention. And that's really what you need to do. You need to focus on retention so that it becomes um, a key goal, a key target, a key effort for you. And there's lots you can do with these donors, not just get them to give again, but you know that last year they gave $50. Maybe this year you can encourage them to give 75, uh, you know, help work with them to kind of increase their, their gift. And we talked about this a little bit with peer to peer fundraising. That may mean you're not asking them to make a donation this year. If they made a donation every year over the last few years for Park City um, or for Live PC, Give PC and they've uh, given outside of that throughout the year, they might be a good candidate for that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising ask or that matching grant ask. So you're still looking at them as to how can you retain them as a supporter? How can you increase their contribution, their efforts for your campaign? And we've added a new tool into the platform this year to help make donor retention even easier for your team to focus on as a part of this year's event. So when you're in your fundraising uh, tab on your dashboard, you will see a report for donor retention. You'll have online donations, offline donations. You'll have a report for donor retention. Take a look at that. And what we've done is we've kind of pre-populated for you here an easy way to see what donors gave last year that have given so far this year during the 2019 campaign, 
what donors gave last year during Live PC Give PC that have not yet given this year. So quick access to that data without having to go back, search through your donations report, download from last year, compare to what you're seeing this year. You have a report that will just tell you, did they give again? Did they not give again? <clears throat> you can also, through this tool, you can either download the full list, send a big blast email through your email system. You can uh, filter and sort to see uh, by donation amount so that you can prioritize and move to the top of the list here. The donors that you haven't retained that have the most dollar value for the gift that you're trying to get them to retain. From there, you can decide how to do personal outreach to them. So either pick up the phone, send them a quick note, um, check in with them in whatever way feels uh, the right way for you. You do have, you'll see kind of an email icon at the end of the uh, row here. You can send them a personal email right through the platform if you'd like. Your higher value donors might be worth a phone call, but that's up to you, you've got options. Um, and again, this is something that you should be able to easily follow during the day on Live PC Give PC to get real time information on how you're doing with your donor retention. So if you've never done this before, I definitely encourage your team to set a goal for donor retention. What percentage of donors that gave last year are we hoping to come back and give again this year? And then when you have that targeted goal, you can keep an eye on this report during the day, follow along with your progress and see how much effort you need to put into following up with these key donors. <clears throat> of course, after the event is over, the fundraising, the stewardship really begins. Um, so, of course, there will be tools in the platform, the thank you page and the thank you receipt, which we've already talked about, that do some of that initial follow-up. But it's always important, especially with higher donors, to figure out what the rest of your thank you strategy looks like. Don't think just because they got one email receipt, it means that they have been properly thanked. Um, that's a key thing, actually, that leads to low donor retention is the lack of follow-up and engagement after a previous donation has been made. So don't be scared to over-communicate when you're saying thank you. People love to hear that. So figure out kind of what your thank you strategy is. Uh, make sure that you take some time to really close the loop on what this campaign helped you to accomplish. So if you said you were trying to raise $5,000 to purchase a new generator, follow up to let donors know that you did purchase that new generator and what did that help you to accomplish? How did that help you make Park City a better place to live, for example? <clears throat> Always important to create special plans for those new donors, those first time donors. Good, strong cultivation after their first gift is one of the best ways to ensure that they will be a retained lifelong donor. So take some time to think about that now so that once the event is over, you just kind of have a plan. You can kick into place a switch that you can flip uh, to get those people through kind of a welcome onboarding uh, journey to uh, really be integrated into your organization. And then consider your year round plans for stewardship and communication. Part of the reason that retention can be so low on giving days is that you do all this work, you reach out to them, the day comes, you get them to make their donation, you say thank you, and they don't really hear from you for a while. Um, not till next year when the campaign starts again, or they don't hear from you in a significant way until then, and so then uh, you've kind of missed all of those opportunities for building that relationship in the off season, if you will. Um, so think about what's the right way to do that through newsletters, through events that you host through content that you post on your blog or your website, social media, et cetera. How are all the ways that, that you are building relationships with your supporters on a year round basis? All right, so we will close today with uh, a few exciting uh, reminders on the prizes that are available for this year's campaign. So um, just like in previous years, 
You will have a leaderboard for all nonprofits together. Um, so all nonprofits that are participating will be eligible for this leaderboard. Uh, and it will be ranking based on the number of unique donors that you get to give to your campaign. Top three organizations will win a prize. So make sure that uh, you kind of craft your strategy around encouraging the most number of unique donors to give to your campaign. And then keep an eye on your progress in the leaderboard during the campaign. See where you stand. If you're in the top five, if you're in the top 10, make sure your donors know that you have a chance to win extra prize money if you get into that top three. Aside from that uh, all nonprofits leaderboard, which everybody is eligible for, uh, each group will also be placed into an additional leaderboard based on the category uh, that you serve, the type of work that you do. And again, there's additional opportunities for prizes there for the top three organizations in those categories. And with that, I will open it up to any questions. So I'll see if we've had any questions come in so far. If you haven't had a chance, feel free to type your question in right now. All right, I am not seeing any questions yet. So um, with that case, I will give everybody a little bit of time back in their day to either get started with the registration process if you haven't done that yet, or think about uh, how you can incorporate some of the things that we talked about today into your Giving Day campaign. Again, please feel free to contact us at support at mightycause.com at any time with questions um, that you have. Uh, we'd be happy to help you. Um, and we did have one question come in, so I'm going to go ahead and answer that real quick before I let everyone go. Um, what do you mean by unique donors? So I mentioned the leaderboard prizes are based on uh, the number of unique donors that give to your campaign, and that is the number of unique individuals that make a donation to your page. So if you have a great supporter and they donate three different times during the giving day to your campaign, that's awesome and that's a wonderful generous supporter, but they still only count as one unique donor. So uh, think of unique donors as unique individuals that make a contribution to your campaign. Hopefully that is helpful in answering that question. Again, any further questions, feel free to send them to support at mightycause.com. Uh, and again, thanks for your time today and uh, happy fundraising for Live PC Give PC 2019. Thanks everyone.